Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the energy stored by a capacitor, which is found as the capacitance topic of AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to try to understand how we can calculate the energy stored by a capacitor. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the energy stored by a capacitor via a calculation. We should be able to calculate the energy stored by a capacitor using graphical data, and then use this to calculate the physical quantities for a charging or discharge capacitor, which falls into the following part of the A-level AQA physics specification, 3.7.4.3, energy stored by a capacitor. Now, as mentioned previously, capacitors store electrical potential energy. The molecules of the dielectric are affected by the uniform electrical field as they are charged and become stores of electrical potential energy. So it's stated that the capacitor stores electrical charge as when they discharge electrons are released from the circuit. However, that's not really the case because on each, on each plate the electrons or lack of electrons are held on their own plate overcoming, overcoming their own repulsion to each other as they are like charges. So work needs to be done into the system to do this. So because this requires energy which is supplied by the power source and is stored as electrical potential energy for as long as the charges are held. So when the charges are released from the plates the electrical potential energy is released into the circuit and beyond. So we're now going to look at how to calculate the electrical potential energy stored in a capacitor. So, as mentioned before, capacitors store electrical potential energy. The use of this energy as a power source is one of their main applications. The energy can be released quickly or slowly depending on the time constant of discharge in the circuit. Now, the rate of discharge, as mentioned before, relies upon the resistance of the circuit and the capacitance of the capacitor. Now, it's important to note that if a capacitor is discharged quickly through a low resistance circuit, it'll produce produce a short burst of large current and this energy is released from the capacitor quickly which is how something like a camera flash or a defibrillator is powered. However if the capacitor is discharged slowly through a high resistance circuit it produces a low current over a longer time. The energy is changed stores slowly. So this can be useful as a temporary power supply such as to power the internal memory of a device while its batteries are changed or, or recharged. So how can we calculate the total potential energy stored by a capacitor? capacitor. So, we can derive the total energy stored in the capacitor from the original capacitance equation, C equals Q over V, because this indicates that potential difference in charge vary in direct proportion. And as we know, direct proportionality is shown as a straight line graph with this, that line of best fit going through the origin of the graph. Now, when the charge builds up on the plate of the capacitor, the electrical potential energy is stored by the capacitor. But as this, so therefore, the electrical potential energy is is stored is the work done to move the extra charge onto the plates to overcome this repulsion of placing light charges on those plates. So this is important to note as this occurs against the potential difference across the plates because it's going against the charge that's already there. So when the charge builds up and the electrical energy is stored by the capacitor, this store occurs due to the charge building up on the plates and this imbalance produces a potential difference across the plates and produces the electrical potential energy store. Now this indicates that the work done is the area under the curve due to the increase in the potential and charge on the capacitor. So we can derive an equation to find the energy that a capacitor stores by considering the energy transferred during the shaded section on this particular graph. Now, in this section, the charge changes from Q to Q plus delta Q, so we're adding a little bit of charge onto the plate when the average PD of V is applied across it. So from our previous topic, we know that the electrical potential energy, E, is equal to potential difference times by the change in charge. So therefore, the total energy is equal to the total of all the little rectangular sections in the area under the graph, and is therefore given by the equation E equals a half QV and this is equal to the area under the graph of a V against Q. So if we consider a capacitor is charged up to 5 volts, this means it stores 5 joules of uh, potential energy per coulomb of charge. So when the capacitor is discharged, its voltage starts to drop, but only if it's discharged by a small amount, then the energy is released as 4 joules per coulomb. And this is equal to the area of a small strip on a QV graph. The potential difference is now lower. So if it discharged by, is discharged by another small amount, the energy released is equal to the next small strip, and etc, and etc 
and etc. So the total energy stored is equal to the sum of all these strips or the area under the graph. So therefore it is E equals a half QV. So if we understand that the energy stored by capacitor is the area under the charge potential difference graph, this gives us the equation E equals a half QV and this is due to the area under the graph forming a triangular shape where an area of a triangle is a half base times height. We can then substitute previous capacitance equations into this equation to get the following formulae. E equals a half CV squared and E equals a half Q squared over C. Now these equations come from the equations found in the examination book. Now any of these equations can be used to calculate the energy stored by a capacitor and this equation is, is used which is dependent on the terms given in the question. So if the question gives you Q and V you use the equation on the top left. If you give it C and V on the bottom left and if you've got Q and C you use the equation on the bottom right. Now in these equations you'll derive the energy in joules if the SI units are used for the other terms. So farads for capacitance, volts for potential difference and coulombs for charge. Now like mentioned before all of these equations are found in the data book for your examination. So if you have learned in today's lesson we should understand the interpretation of the area under of a graph of charge against PD leads to our equations E is equal to a half QV and E is equal to a half CV squared and E is equal to a half Q squared over C. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we can calculate the energy stored by a capacitor via calculation, calculate the energy stored by a capacitor using graphical data, and calculate the physical quantities for a charging or discharging capacitor. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on energy stored by a capacitor, which is found in the capacitance topic of AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.